Okay, you've got an understanding of stocks and how they work and how markets work. Now you want to go buy some. Now, you're, now it's time, the fun part, where you get to go pick them. And uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go to pick stocks. I mean, some people might say, I like the look of the company's logo or the color set on the logo. Or, or I went and saw a Disney movie and I thought it was a great movie, so I'm going to buy Walt Disney stock for example, um, well, that's okay. Uh, not as you know, expertise behind it, but a lot of people buy it that way, or they just regular buy their own company stock, which if you do too much can be a little risky, uh, by the way. So be aware of that. But mostly folks are looking at a little bit more analysis, a little bit more data than that. And really the analysis comes down to two parts, uh, qualitative information and quantitative information or data that's become information. Usable data is information as, an, uh, as, as, a, as we know it. So you're looking at qualitative and quantitative. And what's the difference? Well, qualitative is not numeric. It's kind of those you know, those non-number type ways, and we'll look at that in a second here. And then quantitative is the numbers, it's the hard cold numbers. So let's take a, a quick moment to look at these two things uh, before we start getting into things like ratios and really in depth around different ways that you can evaluate companies. So first off, quantitative, as I mentioned, is the hard cold, hard cold numbers, right? It's not opinion or anything like that. It's like, here's the numbers, here's, the, here's what our sales numbers are, here's what our earnings numbers are, here's the stock price, these are all numerically based things, so that's the quant, the quantitative aspect. And you're looking at financial results. And from those financial results, uh, you're developing or using, uh, there's very many, many, many well-established ratios and things that will highlight us for some of the key ratios out there to evaluate companies versus one another. Uh, whenever you're evaluating companies, and I'll say this many times over, so bear with me on this, but it's really important to compare a company within its own industry against its peers. I mean, it's hard to compare uh, Google, a high-tech company, versus ExxonMobil, a, uh, a, a well-established income uh, dividend-paying oil company. You can, they're both large companies, they're both you know, large company stocks, like, you know, there's aspects of it, but there's really kind of different, different industries. So you want to compare maybe Google versus Yahoo uh, versus maybe Ex Exxon Mobil as a comparison. So financial ratios, uh, you get those from different sources. Um, and when we get into the ratio part, we'll talk about exactly where to find them or how to get them. And most of them are publicly domain anyway, so you never really need to calculate them. But it's important to understand where they come from. And they typically come from the business financial statements. And those are, you know, the balance sheet, you know, looking at the assets and liabilities of an organization. What do they own? What are their assets? You know, buildings, fixed goods, real estate. What are their liabilities? What do they own in debt or who they got to pay stuff to? You know, so their liabilities, you subtract those two, you got what are your, your income or your your, your net you know, value of your company, what's your retained earnings. So if you're accounting, you would get all that. But the idea is you're, you know, you're at a moment of time uh, as far as looking at your balance sheet. Uh, then you have the income statement, which is showing the inflows of, of money and where that goes from the income statement. And then the statement of cash flows is really analyzing cash and inflow and outflow cash and how's your cash position changing. Those three documents uh, uh, that are required to be uh, published out there uh, are very, very important where a lot of these ratios come from. But those are the cold hard numbers. That's just like numerically, I'm not invested in it because I like the latest Disney movie. I'm just looking at what is the numbers on. Now qualitative, we compare that now to qualitative. You know, that is not numeric. That's the quantitative part. So a lot of times with qualitative, you're using things like logic, for example, or maybe things like your gut or emotion or your knowledge about a particular industry or company. I mean, sometimes if you work within a company and you've worked in that company for many years and you worked in a particular industry, you'll know that industry well. That doesn't mean you're an expert as far as buying stocks in that industry, by the way. You still want to do your due diligence on it, but you'll understand that industry and what's working and not working in an industry better than somebody who maybe has not worked in that industry. Uh, for example, if I'm in, in, investing in, let's say, healthcare stocks and somebody's a doctor uh, that I'm you know, comparing to, you know, a doctor is gonna know more about healthcare and what's working, what's not working, how to manage care works, all that stuff, better than maybe I would as far as knowing the industry. Now, I might be a better investor though because I know how to use analysis and quantitative stuff and how to build a better portfolio, but at the beginning, that person will know that industry from a qualitative standpoint. Uh, you also want to look at from a qualitative standpoint is what's going on in the wide world. What are these, you know, demographics? What are trends? What is happening out there? You know, so if you're interested in this, a good example is healthcare. Understand that the population is aging, that, that we're having more uh, longer lifespans, and there's more opportunities for companies to are in, in that healthcare field with, uh, you know, their clients basically, in many cases, they're going to live longer. That means they can buy their products longer. Just that nature itself can be really good. Uh, what about for, uh, you know, millennial generation? What are they buying? What types of things are they buying? Uh, the investment in technology and understanding technology, and that's maybe where technology stocks might, you know, target that particular market. Uh, what's happening from a global aspect, and we're living a very 
global interconnected world. I mean, um, I'm very blessed to have you know tens of thousands of people in my courses here, and uh, I've got in my online courses, and I've got folks from all over the world. I have folks from over 141 different companies that watch my videos, my training videos, and I'm very grateful and blessed, and thank you so much for doing that. But think about how the world has changed, that I can do this over the internet and offer this type of training and education where you know even a decade ago, it just really wouldn't work well, and decades before that, it's like, forget it. You could just work in your local market, maybe go around and give speeches and give live training. Now, we can reach people through the internet. So there's a demo, there's a change and a trend within the world. So what does that mean for maybe your interest in investing in companies that do online training? You know, for all I know, uh, that might be an opportunity uh, around that. Um, so your sources for that from qualitative information is coming from, you know, what you know about the industry, from news, uh, uh, manager, management statements that might be out there. So a lot of times when they release their income statement or the balance sheet, they might have uh, a conference call or something where they're talking to investors or the, you know, the investment expert community and they're talking about future things that are going to happen. That might not be numerically based, but just saying, hey, we're looking to invest in this new market or we're going to expand here or, or maybe we're a retailer and we're going to close stores. So what does that mean for our stock? Or we're going to open stores. What does that mean? Or we're going to lay off people. We're going to hire people. So looking at these management statements coming out uh, can impact a stock. And then also what some of these research analysts who are on these conference calls are listening to, you know, what are they saying out there too as well? I mean, anything could change. There's a, there's a lot of information out there, but you know, you have folks that are dedicated to researching stocks, let's say in a particular sector or field, and they give out statements and they talk about stocks around there too. So that could be part of your qualitative information. Uh, Warren Buffett and other you know, well-known investors, you know, especially Buffett, is talk, really talks a lot about understanding the company and the industry and that you really understand that before you invest in it. And I know I've had some experience with that too. I've had better success with companies I've either done business with or I really understand more so than maybe companies where it sounded good, it sounds like a great technology and I'm just taking a chance on it. And sometimes it's worked and sometimes it hasn't. But I know even my own personal success, the more I can understand the company, the more I can understand the industry, the more I can understand that qualitative aspect and then bring in the quantitative aspect to back up my decision making or, or make me make better decisions, that makes me a much, much better investor than just you know following some news or, or what's the hot stock now. That can always usually lead to trouble because once there's a hot stock out there, people know about it and the price has been driven up and maybe it'll go up, but maybe, maybe it won't. So qualitative, qualitative information is not numeric. Uh, it's kind of that uh, overall information that you're gathering and then use it with the quantitative stuff from the balance sheets, the income statements, and the statements of cash flows, and those financial numbers together to make your choices. You know, so now we're going to take a look at some of these really important ratios. And there's some real key ones. There's hundreds and thousands of ratios out there. Well, I mean, hundreds of thousands, but there's lots of ratios out there. But there's, lo there's a few financial ratios that are really key ones, particularly depending on what you're looking to invest in from growth stocks to maybe dividend or income paying stocks. So let's take a look at those.